Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the 11th chapter of grade 9 Fluvial Geomorphology. This is the third session of the chapter. In this session we will analyze the work of river in its middle course. In this session we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. Analyze the work of river in a middle course. List different landforms created by river in its middle course. And illustrate the formation of these landforms with the help of diagrams. Before we begin our exploration about the middle course of river, let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same. First, river flows through fixed path all the time. Second, river valley is extended only up to the extent of flowing water. Third, river water flows faster on the inner bank of a meander. Well, all these are myths, misconceptions. Let us explore the facts. The question that we begin with is what happens when the river leaves the mountain or the hill? This is where the middle course of a river begins, when it leaves the mountain and enters the plains. Here the discharge increases but the velocity decreases as the gradient becomes very gentle. The valley begins to take U-shape and not V-shaped. The path of the river is not straight. It generally is curvy and river tends to meander. Work of the river here is mainly transportation of material. Landforms that we see in the middle course are alluvial fan, meanders, oxbow lake, floodplains, levees, etc. The next question is, can river carry all its load further? Well, the answer is very simple. Since the gradient is now gentle, the velocity of river decreases, hence the power of carrying material as well. As soon as the river enters its middle course, its velocity is checked, because of which it drops its entire load, mainly traction load at the foothill due to which a heap of traction load is developed. This heap of traction load develops into what we know as alluvial fan. It's a fan shaped landform created at the foothill of mountain or hill. The river divides into a number of channels temporarily or may seep into the porous alluvial fan known as bhabar. Beyond this belt of alluvial fans, the river reappears and causes the land to become fully saturated with water. Such a swampy region is known as terai. Next question is can the river now create its own path? Again the answer is no. Since the water has lost its power due to low velocity, it does not create its own straight path. It prefers to move around obstructions rather than breaking them and creating a straight path. The most prominent landform 
in the middle course is a meander or a loop if there is an obstacle in the path of the river it goes around the obstacle this causes the river to meander and curve the next question is how does the river meander if you observe the cross section and the aerial view of the loop of a meander you would not fail to observe that the inner side or the inner bank of the river has slow moving water whereas the outer bank has fast moving water this fast moving water will eventually cause more erosion therefore the depth of the water near the outer bank will be much more than the depth of the water in the inner bank if you observe this diagram carefully you can see multiple loops of meander the river flows with high speed in the outer part of the curve and with a low speed in the inner part of the curve when the river spends its energy on erosion on the outer bank of the meander it slows down simultaneously having dropped the suspended load on the inner bank of the meander it flows with higher velocity this causes the river to exchange velocity and thus roll between both its banks as a result the river flows in a series of meanders such a river is called meandering river the sediments which are deposited in the inner bank are called point bar deposits whereas erosion of the outer bank is known as cut banks if you look at this picture you can see the inner side of the loop has a lot of deposition which can be clearly seen whereas the outer side appears to be eroded and suggest that the water is much deeper at the outer bank due to meandering the river is deeper on the out outer bank of the meander and shallower in the inner bank when the space between two adjacent meanders becomes very less the river cuts off this space and flows directly bypassing one meander the water in this bypassed meander becomes still as a result suspended load settles down the water evaporates or seeps into the soft sediment and the bypassed meander assumes the shape of an ox bow a lake created in such a manner is known as an ox bow lake eventually the water in the oxbow lake dries up resulting in a swamp the outer banks of these two loops will eventually combine and the water will start flowing straight instead of going through this meander this will eventually turn into what we call as the oxbow lake during floods the river flows through the entire river valley as it does it deposits suspended load in the river valley such deposits constitute the river's flood plain during low discharge the river tends to flow through a limited river channel and the remaining part of the river valley remains dry over a period of time we observe that the river valley gets wider and wider this happens because as the river flows through loops outer bank of the river will have more erosion due to higher velocity which will cause these ends 
to extend outwards. As this happens over a long period of time, the width of the river valley increases. Levees. Levees is the low ridge along a stream bank formed by deposits left after flood water slows down. Continuous deposition of flood plains year after year causes elevation of the river bed. A stage comes when the river flows beyond its banks during times of high discharge. While water flows with high velocity in the main river valley, it flows sluggishly beyond the banks due to the friction offered. As a result, there is a deposition of suspended load beyond the banks in the form of long parallel mounds along the river bank which are known as natural levees. Well, this was all for this session. In the next session, we will explore the lower stage of the river, that is the last stage of the river. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.